I asked you to send me your juiciest questions about the motion industry, and I'm going to answer them. Here. Now. What is the income of a motion graphic 2D animator career in your country? So in Australia, that will vary mostly based on your seniority. If you're a junior, I would expect rates to start between 40 and 60,000 a year and a senior animator will be getting around 100,000. That is generally my experience for more niche and more sort of management roles, you can maybe get more above that for art direction and creative directing. But generally people start around 40, 50K, that's how I started. And then, you know, you slowly creep up the ranks until you decide I've had enough of this, I'm going freelance. A starting mid and spicy hourly rate for freelancing in the industry. Okay, well this one is gonna vary a lot mainly on where you're located, where your client's located, but generally in Australia, which is you know, the only place I've really freelanced, starting day rates gonna be around 400, $450. You can get mid-range 550, 600, 650, and really spicy level, top levels are gonna be charging 800 plus, but you'd have to be pretty specialized, maybe doing some directing as well at that point, offering, a lot to get that kind of a uh, payment but people do it i know people charging 850 us dollars caveats all over the place this is not financial advice the best way to get an accurate answer is to ask someone a freelancer in you know your local area and ask hey how much are you charging how much are the kind of rates going for but some clients have a ton of money they got big wallets they got deep pockets and they will just throw money at something to get it done because the people sourcing it's not their money, they don't mind, they'll they'll pay a thousand dollars a day. If you get a big known client that, you know, is a large tech company, you push push your rate a little bit. You, you can get a bit more out of it. But this is not financial advice, seek um, seek local experts who will be able to um, help you better. And most people are pretty open about sharing that stuff. It's not as a, um, uh, well, of a dirty word as you, you might think. Any advice on talking, the dirty word, money, or rates with clients when freelancing? Talk about it as soon as you can within the project. You're gonna have to do it at some point. You may as well get it out of the way at the start, and I normally bring it up within the first email, and there's normally a bit of a standoff of who's gonna announce what their rate is or versus what's their budget. I think it's good if you can include examples, and you might say, I charge $500 a day. This project took me five days, which included storyboarding and design, and oh, this project took me three weeks, the total was this amount, that kind of thing. And I think those kind of examples really help the client understand, oh, if they want really good intense animation, it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of money, maybe they don't have the budget for that, and maybe you're gonna have to get a bit more creative and do something a little more pared back. But I think mention money as soon as you can, and bring it up as if it's not a big deal, and pretend, oh, hey, we're talking money, we're professionals, people sort of, get on board and there isn't that hesitation and fear around it anymore. That's at least helped me. Do the fancy motion design studios offer good pay? Well, the only fancy motion design studio I've really worked with is Buck and that was as a freelancer. And from my experience, the pay was good. I'd suspect the larger fancier studios all pay pretty well. Companies that tend not to pay well, either really small and starting or the ones that have just scaled up very quickly because they're struggling to meet payroll and mind sort of nickel and dime you on your day rate but larger established studios are probably working on projects that take up a long period of time maybe at least a month with five people on it full time it's probably the smallest projects that one of the fan one of the fancy studios would work with and at that point you're probably demanding a budget that's pretty large so someone's day rate varying you know a hundred dollars or so isn't going to be that big of a deal I don't think. What is your worst experience of dealing with a client? Okay I've been pretty lucky. Two come to mind and they were mainly interactions to do with feedback. One was for a charity we were doing work with. This is also while working uh, full-time in a studio and I won't name the charity because I think they probably do great work and it was just one bad egg in the mix there but they had feedback on one of the edits that we made and that feedback included a soft but definitely a, a gay slur in there. We also did some work for a pretty conservative talkback radio station based in Sydney. The most old school media people you've ever seen. Like th these are people who saw Murdoch growing up and they just made some pretty casually sexist remarks around the office, but 
in, in good fairness, the studio did have like a meeting the next day and says, hey, just, just so we're clear guys, we're never working with them again. So that was a, a good result. And I've been very lucky in this regard. Most of the work I've done with clients has been really, really positive. And those are the, the only ones that really came to mind. But I know a lot of you have had some real nightmares with clients. So please, for the next video in this series, leave down in the comments your worst experience with a client, especially your feedback. If you can give me the worst feedback you've ever received or the weirdest, I would love to um, read them out and comment on them in the next video. Okay, Ben Toyaram asks, could you please tell us about Rive? Ah, well, thank you in particular to that question because they happen to be today's sponsor. Rive is an amazing browser-based design and animation tool. But what really separates it is that you can use it to build interactive motion graphics that transition and mix animations based on events and user interactions. Those interactive graphics can run on just about any platform you'd need them to. It's also not like other design tools that are just mock-ups or prototypes that need to be rebuilt in code. You're creating an optimized final product as you're working. And as far as animation goes, if you're familiar with animating in After Effects, you'll have no problem using and learning the interface. There is a timeline and properties of an element, you can add keyframes, and there's a graph editor right here alongside the timeline that's really intuitive as well. Here are some awesome examples from the community that you can interact with, from basic switches to full character animation and more intricate interactive sequences like this too. And with everything that you see in the community, you have the option to open in Rive. So if you want to know how they made a certain interaction or animation, you can just open it up and see exactly how it is built. You can also choose to publish what you make to the community to share your work as well. Try it out for free at rive.app. What are your thoughts and feelings on how AI image generation will affect the design industry? Now I've got a lot of questions about AI and I think that kind of demands its own video. So I will work towards that in the future and I'll put out a request for takes when I'm about to make that. But in general, I am kind of scared by it a little bit. I don't think it is going to take away the industry as a whole and remove the need for artistic creation. But I was kind of shocked at how quickly generating really good images happened. I thought we'd be at automated cars, Jetsons level of AI before we get to sort of outsourcing uh, creative industries. But I guess it's here and it's still not great at the moment, but it's pretty damn close. And I can't deny there will be a large amount of the industry that will be made uh, redundant, I think. Hopefully that leads to more um, creative fulfilling positions where people can use these tools to make better art. But if you look at the image generation at the moment, that you can't really deny that will remove the need for stock photography pretty soon. Okay, Vlad asks, what part of the motion design job do you hate the most? The part I like the least is um, the design back and forth with the client. I think once design is locked off and you're animating, that is, that is that's the best part. That's my favorite part. But trying to align yourself with the client on the style can be really tricky, especially if they are inexperienced and they don't really know about the process, which means you're going to have to you know, explain more and educate them a little bit more. And especially if a client doesn't know exactly what they want, but they'll know it when they see it, it can be hard to find that balance. I think the best thing to do in that case is show them reference and examples, maybe have a mood board, show them, hey, some studios have made designs in this kind of style or this style or this style and get them to find, you know, what they what they want, what they're after quickly that way rather than you doing revision them saying no we don't like that and then you coming back and then no we don't like that and repeating that for an eternity did you find a good balance between industrial work and joy of creation yes i did when i think i had that balance the most in check was when i was freelancing probably around 2018 just before I started the YouTube channel. And at that point I was taking on freelance clients and in my downtime, I had a personal project, which is the um, the What Is Goon video. And I had that project sort of planned that I knew whenever I had downtime, whenever I wasn't booked or hired, I can always work on that. And that did a couple of things. One, it meant that I was always working towards this big project that would at some point get finished. And if I wasn't working on it, it was okay because I was getting paid, I was getting hired good things were happening. But when I wasn't hired, I at least had something to distract myself and not stress myself out too much about, oh, I'm never gonna get hired again. This is the last time I've ever been booked. I'm gonna be destitute within weeks. 
I had a project that it was like, well, I'm not booked, but I've been really keen to work on this animation. So it's kind of win-win. That really helped me. Should demo reels be vertical format? Should they even still exist at all? Yes, I definitely think show reels should still exist. I don't think we should call for the mass genocide of show reels by any means. This is a rather extreme opinion, actually. It's good to have one thing that says, hey, if you don't have time to look at all through my work and pick out the best stuff, because people are hiring you to not have that time. I don't know about being vertical though. I still think most people are gonna be looking at your work on a desktop if they're hiring you. I think if you want, you can make a vertical and horizontal one. I know a lot of the work we do nowadays is vertical, so it's hard to get that into a um, into a horizontal format, but honestly, either crop it in, or just put black bars at the side and it'll be fine. Have you ever done work for a client you feel morally bad about? Okay, when I was working full-time for a studio, it was their client, so not, I was working directly with them, so there's a nice, nice clever distance I can put between me and them. We did work for a couple of betting agencies and a casino, but that is, yeah, not something I'd do now. Do you think MoGraph should form a union? I definitely think there is a growing interest in unions, but that might just be from the bubble that I'm in, seeing some pressure mount, especially from the VFX and gaming industries. I know Blizzard and Activision have made some big steps on that front recently, but it's a hard thing to organize and implement. I highly um, endorse it though, and you know would, would welcome a union, absolutely. Do you think design slash animation schools are unnecessary with all the options available online? I think online options are generally probably the better way to go. I had a great time in art school and I think there's something intrinsically valuable about having a sort of gateway stepping stone between being a school student and then being a functional adult in society. But it's mainly like the social skills that you learn at university. Like the time I had with my friends there were some of the best times of my life. That I think is very hard to replicate online, but the online options are arguably way more affordable. Also probably more up to date. And also university in a lot of countries can be ridiculously expensive. So I would certainly encourage the experience of university, but I'm not sure about going into debt for an art degree. Uh, what's the release date of your new course? I am working very hard to get it released by the end of the year, but there will be updates on that as, as I progress. What's motion design in one sentence so that everyone can understand it easily? I normally say it's graphic design, but animated. That's what I will say to a to an Uber driver. So I'm not going down a rabbit hole of, well, yes, well, not quite like Pixar, no more. Have you seen ads? When things move in ads, that's what we do. What keeps you motivated when you're overwhelmed slash don't feel creative? Uh, normally the only thing that motivates me at that point is a deadline and or the fear of letting people down. When will there next be a sale or discount for your course? There will not be a sale or discount. I'm not running some sort of bargain basement here. This is a, a fine boutique of quality courses and products. I will have occasional extra features for certain promotions, but no sales, no discounts. It'll be that price. What's the highest level a motion designer can get to? There's no limit, believe in yourself. Where did your sense of humor come from? My insecurities and the need to deflect. Are you happy? Please rate one to 10. Uh, today's a good day. I'll give it, I'll give it 7.5 today. Oh, Hugh Vu asks, what's your dog doing? Do you have any tattoos? Just one. Is keeping up with your social media stuff stressful? Yeah, yes it is. I think almost everyone finds social media stressful. I'm certainly not an exception. And that relates to this next question. How do you deal with imposter syndrome? I feel like it's a very common issue in our industry. I deal with it, I want to say poorly. I got a lot of questions like this, so I thought I'd address this with a little more detail. I think I struggled particularly with comparing myself uh, it's really the, to the work of others, but also the output of others as well. I always think like I should be doing more, that I should be more productive and that I don't have many excuses for not just making more and more work and putting more and more stuff out there. And I actually think that comparison to others 
and that pressure to make more work is the biggest hindrance to both of those. I think the best way to deal with imposter syndrome is to just accept that everybody kind of feels like that. No one feels as though they are doing the best possible work they could be doing and that they're on top of everything. Everyone feels like they could be doing more and I think social media doesn't help with that at all. It makes us think that posting great work all the time is the norm when I think really that's just a, an illusion that doesn't really reflect uh, reality as far as far um, as far as I've seen. So if you're struggling to make work that you're proud of, or if you're thinking that you should just be posting more or that you're not really making the most of your day if you're not on that Sigma grind set nonstop, um, go easy on yourself. Life is hard enough as it is. It'll be okay. There's no rush. 